You guys are ruining Christmas here. Yeah, yeah. it's terrible. <laughs> Uh, we open deep within the frozen north, inside the first castle on the left. As a matter of fact, the only castle on the left. With the characters huddled around the bedside of Lord Claus, where his stricken form languishes. Through the frigid lonely night, the winds wail and howl about the fearful northern hamlet of Christmas Town. It's clamor but a faint echo within the grandiose chamber where you gather around Lord Claus as he struggles upon his cushioned divan. Beads of sweat glisten upon his pallid skin and his fingers twist the crushed velvet fabric of his great red suit. Yet no blade has pierced him, no poison lurked in his cinnamon eggnog, and despite Mrs. Claus's desperate pleas over the previous days to eat, Papa, eat, his veins stand out like green cords on his temples, and his once corpulent form lies haggard and emaciated. Heroin hits Santa Claus hard. <laughs> Suddenly his ashen lips quiver and his voice rises in an eerie call, as if spoken beyond vast glacier-torn gulfs. I thank you for coming, he gasps, his eyes dull and glassy. The Yule light is dying, and I with it. Aid me, for I fear a great evil has awakened that seeks to snuff out the light that binds me to this realm. Should the Yule light, the very spirit of Christmas itself, go out, then only darkness can remain, and I will never be. Even now, as the Yule light dims, evil has begun to creep back into the silent places of the world. Again, his body is torn by terrible convulsions. <coughs> Much like me. <laughs> <laughs> Method acting. Yes. My trusted champions, Yukon of Cornelius, Rudolph the Red, and the wise dental monster Hermie, have gone missing, lost somewhere in the frozen north. Find them, save the Yule light, and bring peace and hope back to the realm. You are our last and only hope. Foam flies from his contorted lips as his body racks from coughing spasms. The sour sweet winds have risen, which can mean only one thing. The Grinch has awoken. Seek out the Grinch's lair and always remember the true spirit of Christmas lies within your... Oh, but his voice dies into a failing whisper, replaced only by low and confused moans that wane from his slackened lips. Pretty dark for a kid's show. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is two kid shows smashed together. Racked by a nameless malaise brought on by the evil that is spreading throughout the realm, Lord Claus has fallen into a restless torpor and can no longer communicate or rise from his divan. The characters are welcome to anything the small village of Christmas Town may have in terms of equipment and supplies for your arduous trek through the frozen north in search of the lost heroes and the source of this great evil. Sam says, we need nothing more than what we have. We should probably take this opportunity for you to introduce characters. Mm. And while you're introducing your characters, you will notice that towards the bottom of each of your character sheets there is a starting information that your character has and you may want to also share that with your fellow characters slash players so we will just go with the order i have and we can start off with uh damon and your two characters hi i'm cindy lou who i'm just a little thing i'm from whoville of course as i was coming to christmas town i witnessed that the abominable snow monster of the north has returned from beyond the polar wastes in search of food. And hi, I'm Sam, the redoubtable dwarven snowman. You know, Yukon, who's one of the missing champions, he's actually found a great peppermint deposit and started his own mine. Why, I believe it's even marked on our maps of the frozen north. How about you, Rob? Okay, uh, I've got Fireball, free-spirited and rambunctious, a fledgling reindeer. Hopes will one day follow in the footsteps of my father, Comet. Uh, but of course, we heard all the bad news, and here he is. And Fireball knows that when Rudolph was last seen two days ago, he mentioned he was going to escort his visiting relatives back home due to the growing threats in the area. S.D. Kluger, 
Well, he's uh, affectionately known as SD for short. A courier who delivers letters to Santa, a nimble-footed and fabulous dancer. Is starting in There's an ancient forest of silver and gold somewhere within the frozen north. A king's ransom of riches dangles from its heavy boughs, and a wise oracle dwells somewhere within. That wise oracle must be Burl Ives. <laughs> must be. Last but not least, Mr. Garrett. Well, my damn husband decided to be Santa Claus and then get <laughs> this damn <laughs> Go and save his sweet lily ass. I'm here to save the Yule Light. It's a strange strawberry-shaped gemstone in the very embodiment of the spirit of Christmas. Its radiant light is a symbol of hope and renewal and responsible for the spreading of peace and joy in the world. If I were to go out only even if it were to go people can remain, it's horrible. We gotta save the old man and save Christmas Town. Oh boy. You're stuck with that voice now for the yeah. next three hours. Yeah, he's stuck. yeah make him talk a lot. <laughs> No! <laughs> All right. Uh, I didn't even get a chance to read myself, but uh, I'm the foreman. I'm boss elf. I get to make all of Santa's toys. And, uh, and I conduct the choir. It's great. But uh, I last saw Hermes, that damn dentist elf. I don't know what. He's, he's Santa's kid. Let's just face it. But anyway, they call him an elf. And so, uh, yeah, he, he went a week ago. Oh, man, yeah, he, he mentioned me a week ago that he was going up to aid his friend King Moon Moonracer, who was troubled with a sore incisor. Wherever the hell is King Moonracer? Is that on? Oh, that might be on the Isle of Misfit Toys. Hermes once talked about that damn place. That kid, I swear, is just Santa's son. Oh, well, all right. But yeah, but let's, let's go kick some ass. I'm doomed. <laughs> Yeah, I would have gone with a lot less uh, strain yeah. in the voices. Good luck, Garrett. But, uh, yeah. I got water running on you. <laughs> your characters are the face, by the way. They have to do all the talking. Yeah, you're going to do all the interactions. And with that, the map is yours. Seems to me that we know where... Uh, I, I think uh, Cornelius must have gone to his peppermint mine. We should go there. That's my suggestion. What do you say, friends? Uh, yeah. Well, Herm- don't, if, don't have any if, better ideas. That's the okay. I don't mind it. Where else could we go? Uh, would Mrs. Claus know where the Yule Light is? No, she would not. Okay. Okay. Just so long as we don't run into the abominable snow monster. Bumbles bounce. The frozen north is trackless leagues of barren snow-crusted plains, windswept crags and ice-covered forests that loom threateningly on the very edge of the civilized world. It is a secluded, time-forgotten place filled with strange customs and savage predators. Oh, I hope not. You have wandered north for several hours, and soon a cave mouth opens at the foot of a large hill, its interior shrouded in darkness. A large wooden placard rises above the entrance proclaiming, Yukon's Peppermint Mine, in bold painted letters. See what I tell you. And everything goes dark. Darkness falls upon the land. The midnight hour is close at hand. <laughs> Wrong holiday. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, because we don't have a torch lit yet. Of course. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Does anybody have a torch? Anybody got any peppermint lifesavers that we can just kind of crackle together? Do we want to hand wave some equipment? Oh, here's equipment. an entrance on the map. Okay. Yeah, on the north. All right. The All mine right. is cold, damp, and silent as the very shadow of death. That's not the metaphor I was thinking in my head. Down the stairs! Do any of you have torches? We have improvision. Can we have grabbed some from the town? Absolutely. So okay. you do have torches, yes? Do some people not have improvision? Yeah. Right. Do, do some uh, people not have improvision? Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. Right, yeah. Ah, oh, sad. Okay, both of my characters happen to be okay. All right. Torches it is. I guess uh, SD as the thief will scout ahead. Good luck, young SD. Oh, wait, this is the peppermint mine. It's not going to be filled with traps. Why would Yukon no, Sam? No. Why would he uh, put traps in here? It's his mine. Exactly. Unless he meant to guard it from something. Mm. SD is going to break into a marvelous dance routine, showcasing his graceful ability while he heads down the stairs. And while dancing, SD gains a plus three to armor class and reflex saves. Just in Very case. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Hewn from solid rock, this tiered mining tunnel descends deeper into the ground via a series of solidly built ladders. A cold breeze blows up from somewhere deeper within, 
its chill touch like frost against your exposed skin. Curiously, empty peppermint veins run along the walls, not a single morsel left within. Only a sticky, foul-smelling substance can be found in its place. That's odd. There's usually peppermint all through here. Well, I mean, he's been mining it. Why would there be any left? What's this gross, sticky substance? I don't... Huh? Drug? The reindeer fireball will sniff at it to see if he can tell what it is with his reindeer super sense. That's not actually an ability on here. But he's a reindeer. They have some of the finest senses of smell in the animal kingdom. Just smells horrible and nasty. It's a well-known fact that the, the game master is ignoring to our parable. <laughs> hmm. It doesn't smell just like rotten peppermint, but some other foul substance. Yeah, it smells like something else. There's a slight whiff of peppermint, but then something kind of uh, bilious. It's Jaeger. Oh, no. Wait. Uh, peppermint schnapps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, I, it, it looks like we can still continue to go to the south. Yeah, we can keep winding our way down. Going to continue? Yes, yeah, please. I think so. Oh, well, now then. Wouldn't there usually be a bunch of workers here? And this is a mine. There's nobody around? Yeah, it, it, it is. It is completely, completely empty. In this very large chamber, you can see a ladder leading down further to the south. To the west, you can see a wooden barricade. And then sort of just to the like south and east of you, it looks like mining equipment. Mine carts and stuff? Yeah. SD, before we trample all over the place, is going to look to see if there are signs on the floor of people running and fleeing all in one direction or anything like that. Like, as though it had been abandoned quickly and precipitously. Oh, and are there, like, tools strewn about, or...? Well, the place is quite empty. You know, there's stone. Again, all of the peppermint veins have looked like they've been mined out. A lot of Santa's veins look part, like they were mined out, too. It's, it's quite um, clean and empty. Other than the mining equipment in that area and the wooden barricade to the west, there's nothing of real interest in here. Looking down the ladder, does it like look like it descends way down, or is it just to, down to another level of mining? No, it just looks like it descends about another 8 to 10 feet down to another level. Well, I'm kind of curious about that barricade to the west. I agree. We should check it out. All right, let's go. <laughs> the mine tunnel culminates <laughs> at a large barricade. Wooden planks have been nailed together and suspended across the entire tunnel, barring any passage beyond. A crudely painted sign reads, Danger! Do not enter! I guess we can't go there. <laughs> hmm. Sam will head over to the ladder. A heap of mining equipment rests by a rickety-looking ladder that descends down to another tier of the mine. Off in the distance below, you hear someone bellow, Yahoo! Oh, that's Cornelius. We'd better go see if he's okay. Yeah, yeah, down the ladder. There he is. Rankin Bass will be suing Dungeon Crawl Classics. Oh, actually, no, <laughs> I have to say these tokens were given to me by some guy by the name of Matt Robertson in a Facebook group for oh. Dungeon Crawl Classics, which I thought was quite cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Because as you know, I'm far too lazy to make such things. So standing atop a massive flat top boulder is a wild eyed red haired dwarf who bellows while swinging a burning torch in an attempt to fend off a gargantuan red and white striped worm that writhes about his perch. Eat my peppermint, will ye, you oversized, slithering, sweet-toothed slug? <laughs> Exhausted and overmatched, he has managed to keep the worm at bay for days, but is in desperate need of assistance. The worm attacks him with a powerful bite from an oversized mouth dripping with saliva and ringed in large, flat teeth. We are all ready at the cover art. I love it. Well, that's no good. We gotta help him. You immediately recognize the stench from the worm as the smell you noticed upon entering the cavern. It's Shai Hulud. Get him. Yeah, attack. All right, let's roll for initiative. Okay. SD has a two. I'm just going to stand and look a little bit. The worm Ooh, has a one. 16 plus two, 18 for fireball. Very nice. Let's go get him. Yeah, he's just bounding. So that once we've come down the ladder and he's... How'd the reindeer get down the ladder? We'll just, he just kind of did. So Cindy Lou is a seven. Sam is a 10. Fireball's an 18. What's boss elf at? 16. Uh, Mrs. Claus has an extra O. 
She's an eight. Uh, Mrs. Claus is eight. Okay. Sorry, Rob. Continue with Fireball. Let's go get him. Oh, I was just saying he had somehow gotten down the stairs and I'm entirely clear. But he did. But down the ladder, I mean. Oh, he can fly. That's right. But I'm talking about it. he flew down the stairs. He can fly, but just for <laughs> limited bursts. So he flies down to the ground and then, yeah, charges full on toward this uh, worm, hoping to okay. gore it most vilely. 20 cider. And I get to roll a four cider. So, yeah, um, my heroic feat, if it succeeds, will be to drag the worm away from Cornelius. All right. Uh, from Don Cornelius, because love me some soul train. Okay. Ugh. Six and three. That is a total of nine, then, which I assume doesn't oh, do much. A nine, a nine is, not, is not going to make it. Okay. Unfortunately, Fireball flies too far and misses both Cornelius and the worm. Okay. And now uh, Boss Elf is up. So this worm does not look like it has any eyes? As if it might be sightless? No, it, it's just all um, like cartilage and teeth. All Great. Yep. Great. But so that's the guess... right. Oh, <laughs> damn bastard. Uh, so yeah, I guess Boss Elf is just going to kind of work his way to the side and just try and hurl some slings at it just to try and see if it can get his attention. And a two's not going to do it. Roll the two. So, no, nope. that is not. They are going to just bounce it with no effect off it. Sam is up with a ten, I believe. Right. Sam's going to rush in with his... He's going to use the battle axe, because that's just awesome. And so I got... A... Oh, Jesus. With two dice, I got a seven. That's not good. <laughs> wow. But he also does have a shield bash. So, oh my goodness. Oof, that's three. So he's a snowman, and he's terrible at this, apparently. <laughs> You guys are ruining Christmas here. Yeah, yeah. This is terrible. <laughs> With your right. terrible rolls. So, Cindy Lou's turn, right? No, it's Mrs. Claus. She oh, has an eight. Claus. Okay. Let's hear those dulcet tones. You have to say it in character now. All right, Mrs. Uh, that's that's me. Oh my! What the hell is going on? I was looking at my spells. I had to remember all of my spells. Uh, so how far is Mrs. Claus away from, uh, said creature? Oh, as far as you want to be. I just assumed you all came down the ladders, so I will leave that entirely up to you. Okay. Oh, great. She doesn't have any ranged weapons. It is basically right on top of Yukon Cornelius, so... Uh, I'm going to try casting Word of Command if... <laughs> Creatures hearing the word are bound to obey. Um, so let me... I guess I'm just going to roll and see if anything happens. Okay, so 13, so I rolled a 16. So the cleric can speak a word at a target within 30 feet. If the creature fails at save, it must obey the command for another rounds equal to 1d6 plus character level. Okay, so that's 3, so that's 5. Now, that's, that's, that's if it can hear it. So the cleric speaks a powerful word that carries with it commanding will of his deity. Creatures hearing the word are bound to obey. So I don't know if this thing has ears or not. The word must Assume be a single does. word. Okay. So it's up on top of the boulder? Yes. Okay. So then she's going to command it to fall. We'll save versus spell check. The spell check was 16. Six. So 16. Okay. Let me roll my will. That I rolled a 15, but I have a will of minus 2. So that is a 13. It fails, I believe. Mm -hmm. It fails the test. Okay, the worm rears up to attack Cornelius. Yukon Cornelius rolls out of the way and the worm goes crashing past him and falls into a great gaping chasm just south behind the boulder and so, disappears from sight. Who? Great bouncing icebergs, says Cornelius. You came just at the right time. I don't think I could have kept that greedy peppermint munching maggot from my mind any longer. Here. Take this as a token of my appreciation. It has served me well in the past. And he hands you his pickaxe, the greatest prospector of the North pickaxe. Oh, oh, Sam is drooling. I think Sam the snowman should have it, yeah. I don't know how much time we have before that thing, my, my spell wears off, so we should run now. Yeah, are you, are you, are you coming with this, Cornelius? These squirming sweet tooth salamanders eat all the peppermint in the north. I gotta stay here and rid my mind at them. 
So wait, Cornelius is just about to die against one of these worms. He's going to stick around without his pickaxe and fight all of them. Don't analyze it. Stop ruining Christmas, Rob. All right, I think we have to jug Cornelius and drag him out. So I should read this. Greatest prospector of the North's pickaxe. Magical hand axe plus two with the following powers. Icebreaker. It deals triple damage against creatures and constructs made of ice. Gold digger. By embedding the axe into the ground or wall and then taking a lick of its pick, the wielder can detect gold, silver, gems, and peppermint within 100 feet as per the dwarf ability to spell gold and gems. Should a dwarf be the holder of this magical pickaxe, their innate ability to smell gold and gems is intensified, Ooh, allowing for me. double the normal range of detection. Oh. And finally, mountaineering grants a plus five to climb checks when using this pickaxe to scale sheer surfaces. Oh, oh, oh. Yep, Sam should get it. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Fantastic. Sam is very happy with yeah. this. A great gaping hole occupies the far end of the chamber. The disgusting wet sounds of slurping mixed with grinding stone can be heard issuing from its gloomy depths. Cornelius, I, I know you said that you have to eradicate your mind of these worms, but Santa is in dear need of his champions to save Christmas Town. The Grinch has returned! Cornelius! I realize this, but I have to protect my mind! Your mind will be here! Christmas Town and all of the land is going to fall to the Grinch! My husband is almost dead! Well, maybe the pickaxe <laughs> is all we need from here. <laughs> well, if that's what you think is best, Cornelius. I think I'll tell you what I'll do, Mrs. Claus. I'll harvest some of my finest peppermint. And I'll head back and help nurse Mr. Cl- blah, 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 Lord Claus back to help. You got that would make everything so wonderful. Someone needs to protect him while we're out saving the rest of him. You can count on me just Thank not to you. go with you any further. <laughs> <laughs> I promise we will come back and rid your peppermint mind of any of these stupid worms once we're done. The wood that fell down the hole. Time is wasting. We have to hurry. With that, let's get out of here. He leaps into the chasm to the south and disappears from view. Okay, you exit the uh, yep. Yep. peppermint mine. Break. Okay, and you find yourselves back in the frozen north. Do we know of any other locations where we might find people? Well, we have to find Rudolph. Yes. Rudolph said he was going to take his visiting relatives back home. Uh, where is Rudolph's home? Is that the I Christmas forest? I don't remember the cartoon that well, but sure, why not? Yeah, let's try the Christmas tree forest. I mean, it's just to the east in here anyway. So you start heading east towards the Christmas tree forest. And as you are making your way across, you see etched against the snow swept sky, a gleaming metal pole that rises from the ground. Somehow... You can't help but feel drawn towards its hoarfrost slick sides. Everyone needs to make a DC 15 willpower save. What? Gee, many Christmas is not going to be my what is it, What's our target? 15? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that's a fail for Fireball. Come on. And uh, I've got two fails here. Gosh. Oh my gosh. All night, a six has been my highest roll on any, on the, on any D20. Right, so oh, now wow. this is not going to go well for Christmas. Boss Elf was a fail. Boop. And oh, then Mrs. Claus was a pass. She oh, had a 15. Right. She got a 15. Everyone except Mrs. Claus feels compelled to walk towards the pole and lick it. You go wrong. Their tongues become stuck to its frozen surface. Removing one's stuck tongue is a painful affair that will inflict 1d4 damage. You can make a uh, DC8 fortitude save to take half damage. All right, let's try that. And it's going to be a three damage. Okay, well, now I roll high. Ooh, okay, so SD made it. So is that rounded down? I am rounding down for the holidays. So that's just one point. Oops, that's a fail on the fort save for the reindeer. Oh, no. Okay, Boss Elf rolled a 22 for his fort save. Oh, very nice. There is bad news, though. Any spellcasters who damage their tongues are going to suffer a minus one die spell oh, check penalty. Okay, okay. Until your tongue is healed. How long will that take? Oh, let me see. How long will that take? 
Untreated? Oh, four days. If it's not healed, man. Oh, if only we had a cleric. Wait a minute. You are a cleric. <laughs> not only do you have a cleric, she's the only one who is not injured. What the hell are you all doing? You're not supposed to lick that pole. Ugh. Seems boss like right Elf, why do. did you do that? Why did you do that, Boss Elf? Let me look at your tongue. What is that? Twelve. Go. Oh, just barely made it. Let me help. Help with your tongue. I'm going to heal your tongue. Blech. She's going to say blah as his tongue gets healed. Suddenly, the lonely woods give way to a copse of majestic pines, their branches heavy with decorations. A king's ransom of gold and silver baubles dangle from the branches with a vibrant luster. Everything from coins and necklaces to fine fabrics and silvered weapons decorate these trees. Huh. Silvered weapons, huh? Oh, yeah, I heard about something like this. All sorts of good stuff. Ooh, and there's a wise oracle somewhere within here. Maybe that oracle fella could help us out. Maybe we should talk to him before we start taking stuff. Good idea. That seems like the right thing to do. There's like all this stuff. Is there anything that looks like a, a dwelling or a boat? No, it's just a dense forest of just majestic pines. And almost every branch is covered with decoration of every manner of gold, silver, finery, valuables decorating these branches. Yeah, I'm a little leery about taking stuff before we check in with the Oracle. They all look like they're from like various origins too. There's like no, there's there's a huge variety of things here. There's no real like consistency between them. It's just just mm -hmm. uh, just a mishmash of marvelousness. I'll take this rocket launcher. <laughs> well, are, are, is all this stuff weighing the trees down? I mean, these are pine trees, real big, tall pine trees. Yeah. But it's not, no, they're not like, um, you know, it's not, none of it's breaking them or anything. It's just like they're heavily decorated, almost just like Christmas trees, except with immensely valuable things. Hmm. Okay. Does anybody have things that can help them search for someone here? I want to find this That's Oracle fellow, what I heard about. I have no spells. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Fireball is can fly for two rounds of base move before needing to land. Okay. Fireball is going to jump up and fly above the treetops for a little bit to see with a deer's eye view if he can see any place that an oracle might live. So you can fly for up to two rounds. So he'll zoom around a little bit, see if he can see anyone. Flying high above the trees, Fireball sees an enormous snowman deep I'm within right the Christmas tree forest. Hmm. Okay. No, this snowman is very enormous, like three times the size of a normal man. I'm right here. Fireball lands and says, well, I saw a giant snowman bigger than five of you put together, fella. Maybe he's the Oracle? I don't know. But I can lead the way there if you want. Yeah, let's go. That seems like a good idea. Yeah, the reindeer will lead the way through the forest to where he saw the giant snowman. Did it look abominable at all? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, yeah, we proceed toward that. So you all move deeper into the Christmas tree forest. And sure enough, you come across a clearing. And at the center of the clearing stands a massive snowman. Three times as tall as a normal man. Happy birthday! Is that what he says? <laughs> no, it says nothing. It's entirely silent and inanimate. Quick, find the black hat that we got to put on him to make him talk. Then he'll say happy birthday. Where's the magic hat? Does he have a black hat on? He does not. No. Hmm. The picture is for demonstration purposes only. <laughs> it is, however, to scale. Uh, hello there, snowman fella. Can we have a yes. word with you, too? Yeah, I'm right here. All right, no, the, the big fella over here. Yes, right here. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll call you Sam when I'm talking to you. Oh, sure. I'm also a snowman, you know. Yes, I, I, I'm aware of that. Snowman remains uh, motionless and inanimate. No, I, I'm moving around just fine. Again, right. all of the, the trees surrounding you are all adorned with various valuables and, you know, items of value. <laughs> valuables and items of value. Valuables and I Fuck you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Stop ruining Christmas. <laughs> I wanted cha-cha heels. That's what I'm here for. 
Okay. I bet the instant we take anything from the trees, that guy's going to come and smack us in the face. Hmm. Does anybody know any uh, any giant snowman lore? Mm. Do we know about the magic hat thing? Mm. There's no magic hat, okay? Well, <laughs> Colin <laughs> says that. Well, maybe he's just trying to throw us off the hat. trail. Okay. Forget the magic hat. All right, what if we chop down a bunch of pine trees, stack them around the snowman, and set them on fire? And set them on fire, right. <laughs> okay. This could be that oracle I was hearing about. Yeah, Cindy Lou will walk up to the snowman and poke it with one of her swords. Swords? Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Okay. A little bit of snow falls from the impact. Mm -hmm. And then it seems to magically repair itself. Yeah, oh yeah, this thing's definitely a guardian, I think. I think we're on rails and we have to make this thing activate if we're going to get farther. Mm -hmm. Does anybody speak snowman? No. I don't know that there is a separate snowman language. All right. So Cindy Lou has candy cane swords. Are there any nice silver candy cane swords? There are certainly silver swords. There are some golden swords. There are some ruby rings and uh, garnet necklaces and all manner of finery. This might be nice. That would look great. I'm sure there will be no shenanigans after I take this down from the tree. Wait, wait, wait. What if we put something on the tree? Ooh. An offering like. Oh, that's a good idea. Like this fruit cake? This Claus is gonna pull out a fruit cake uh wreath. It's a fruit cake wreath or fruit cake made into a wreath. Uh-huh. Let's put this out there. It's one thing that she baked yesterday. Go for it. Okay. Mrs. Claus is gonna go and put the fruit cake wreath on one of the trees. Because uh, as we know, things baked from the heart and given as Christmas gifts are not as good as Stuff bought fancy Christmas yeah. gifts. Yeah. So nothing? Nothing. Oh. Well, I'll try my ruby hair bow. It's worth 200 gold pieces. She hangs her ruby hair bow on a, tr on a tree. Wow. The moment she steps back from hanging the Ooh. hair bow on the tree, the snowman bursts to life and seems Greedy to raise even taller. It speaks with a resounding voice that booms like the crumbling of icebergs. Why have you woken the oracle? What is it that you seek? Ooh. A single question I shall answer. Oh, jeez. Do you like that hair bow? <laughs> no, wait. No, wait. That's not the question. It's swell. And it's... Um, no, come on. Uh, uh, Shh, everybody, hold on. Get together, get together. Yeah, what's the right what's the right question to ask? Maybe it's one question for each of us. Just that uh, one probably only if we give a us. gift, right? Should we ask him? That, no, don't ask him what question. Don't. We have to ask him what question. Uh, what do we want to do? Do we we're want to find for... the Grinch? Do we want to find the Grinch? Do we want to find uh, Rudolph? Or do we want to find the Yule Light? Do, well, wait. Does Mrs. Claus know where the Yule Light is? No. No? No, she just knows that it's... Okay. It's uh, what it is. It's a okay. gemstone. I suggest that we look for the champions that we haven't met yet. Rudolph or Hermie. Should we ask if it knows where one of them are? Well, can I ask Colm my Fireball's information sheet? It says he knows that Rudolph was going to visit relatives back home. Do I know where back home is? I think we were kind of guessing that it was this forest, but apparently not. Back home is probably uh, further north. But we don't know exactly where. No. Okay, so that could know. be worth asking where Rudolph is. And then what do we know about where Hermie was? Anything on anybody's um, sheet? He went to go see Moon King Moonracer, which I think is... Is that playing... Isle of Misfit Toys? Island. Think... It is the Island of Misfit Toys. Okay, right. so the one yeah. we don't know where he is is, is Rudolph, I guess. Right. So or the Grinch. We don't know where the Grinch is, right? We don't. Yeah. I feel like we need to get the champions before we confront the Grinch. But. I agree. But maybe we kind of know where the champions are, right? Because the map shows the forlorn north, right? That's where we would go to find Rudolph. Is it? Or is that where the Grinch is? Uh, Colm, is it safe to say that the forlorn north goes into the mountains, deeper into the mountains? Yes, the forlorn north is deep into the darkness beyond the mountains. Yeah, so the reindeer family far, doesn't live up far, there, right? Far to the north, no. Yeah. Should we ask where Rudolph is then? 
I think so. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Fireball. Great Oracle, can you tell us where is uh, our friend Rudolph? The reindeer lies northwest of here, imprisoned by an abominable beast. Okay, the abominable snow monster. Oh, and you give us a location. Great. And he points a magical finger and a a twinkling happens Hmm. to the northwest at a low range of mountains. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, it sounds like Rudolph is one way and Hermes the other way. Should we split up? You don't split up at Christmas, <laughs> Rob. You don't split up at Christmas. It's about coming together and staying together. That's right. All I want for Christmas is Yule. D- didn't somebody say that that Bumble was running around? Well, I think it sounds like the Bumble might have Rudolph for lunch. If, if that's the case, let's go get uh, Hermes. Sure, I agree. I have one more question to ask. Hmm? Sam, well, it, 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 did the Oracle freeze up again? Yep. Sam takes his silver pocket watch and hangs it on a tree bough worth 150 gold pieces. Wow. Nothing happens. Dad. What? Well, he takes his silver pocket watch back. All right. Let's go get Hermie then. Okay. Yeah, but Rudolph might be in trouble right now. But well, the way things are going, maybe Hermie is too. Yeah, that's what I think. To the Isle of Misfits. Okay. Let's go. So you're heading down south to Iceberg Bay. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? If we killed that snowman, we could take all the stuff. As you head south across the frozen plains, you catch sight of a magnificent creature darting between large drifts of snow. A crystalline fox with a sparkling diamond pelt and eyes that blaze like sapphires. It pauses momentarily to regard you in silent acknowledgement before melting back into the snowy expanse. Gazing upon the elusive crystal fox is a good omen that brings fortune to the party. Each Ooh. PC present gains Ooh, three permanent luck points wow. to a maximum of 18. Who gets those? Everybody. Everybody. All of them? Oh. Yes. Adjust your modifiers accordingly. Well, that was lucky. All right. That was lucky by definition. So it looks like everyone who can't fly has to hop from iceberg to iceberg to get iceberg to the island. To iceberg. You stand upon the frozen shoreline of a calm sea, its mirror-like surface dotted by floating icebergs of all sizes, some of which gleam with a peculiar silvery luminescence. Off through the fog-shrouded waters lies a small island of ice and snow. A large marble castle dominates the center of the isle, surrounded by a frozen beach of glacial ice. Welcome... To Iceberg Hopscotch. Uh-oh. What do those numbers mean? Wait, is this Minesweeper? <laughs> Ooh. Shit, do we have to do the Minesweeper puzzle to figure this out? I don't remember how that works. Audio gold. And you land on the beach of the Yay! island of Smith. All right, there's our path. Nice work, We kids. did it. That, that's going to make for riveting radio drama. I know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to quite cover that one. You can replicate that experience at home by picking up your own copy of Minesweeper. Through the frosty mist rises a windswept isle of snow and ice, a majestic castle looming at its center. You cross the frigid bay and make landfall upon a beach of glacial ice. Its blue-white surface stretches across the horizon towards a large marble castle that looms in the distance. Just a short distance away, half buried within the snow and ice, rests an elaborately designed crate as large as a covered wagon. That must be Hermes' dental crate, maybe. Let's go check it out. Yeah, he'll he'll check it out and uh, see what the crate is. Suddenly, the lid of the snow-crusted crate bursts open, revealing a strange-looking humanoid that rises up from within. The creature is garishly clad as a jester and twice as tall as a man, with Chilly. ruddy cheeks and a bright red nose. With a high pitch of voice, it shrieks, Halt! Who goes there? Oh, yeah, there's that guy. Uh, we're uh, we're looking for uh, Hermes the dentist, the young fella. You know him. Uh, we're from uh, Christmas Town, right? Christmas Town. Looking to help Santa himself, Lord Claus. Looking to help Santa, eh? Oh, Hermie, he's been in the castle for days. Oh, and King Moonracer's been acting real strange of late. He's been real moody and mean-spirited. 
and having a strange greenish gleam to his eyes ever since he flew north to investigate some strange mountain. I fear for the worst for poor Hermie. Maybe you should go inside and see if you can find him. Sounds like a plan, doesn't it? Let's nice. go inside and find him. Let's, let's go uh, find him. Sounds like he's been staring into that planter stone of his too, too much. So you enter the castle. The castle looms over the snowy isle. Its gray walls and lofty towers soar into the gloom-swept skies. Up a wide set of marble stairs are a set of massive golden double doors that stand open, allowing passage into the great hall beyond. The ornate hall is fashioned from pure yellow marble and trimmed in gold leaf. A large golden dais rests at the far end of the chamber, while in the center of the chamber are three massive amber blocks upon a floor comprised of solid ice. Is there any sign of uh, people? Funny you should say that. The floor is comprised of solid ice and radiates with an unearthly cold. A short stone curb surrounds it, while three massive amber blocks, each as tall as a man, rest upon its surface. To your horror, you catch sight of the Dentalmancer, Hermie, trapped beneath the thick ice. His distorted form is a riot of flailing arms and soundless pleas, as he motions for you to release him from his frozen prison. Um, and there's like three blocks, and Hermes was under the ice under our feet, though, like, right? Hermes is under the ice. Okay. Anybody got, anybody got a big magic pickaxe we could go to work with? Yes. Yes. Get him, Sam. Does the magic pickaxe work? The magic pickaxe does not seem to work. This ice would appear to be under some form of enchantment and a non-natural ice. But as you are attempting to hack through it and you make eye contact with Hermie, he makes a motion towards one of the amber blocks and then points directly above himself on the ice. Okay, let's move one of those amber blocks on top of him. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, Fireball will help uh, and put his weight into it to move it all easily. What's this? Oh, for fuck's sake. It's another game. It's uh, another mini game, folks. Uh, okay. More audio gold. To anyone listening, there's these amber blocks on this like five by three grid uh, with Hermie in the middle. To anyone listening who's made it this far, I'm well impressed. You win the prize. Ingenuity here. I very, did it. Very good. Very good. You did. Hermes is smashed between two amber blocks. <laughs> the ice cracks beneath the amber blocks, and Hermes, Hermie. <laughs> I keep calling yeah, Hermes. sorry, I keep, I keep calling him Hermes. It's my fault. I think I started it. Clambers out and says, oh, gee, thanks, guys. I don't know what Hermes sounds like. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's about right. He so, sounds like this. Oh, you know, don't he? Do you remember that? He's a very oh, nasally yeah. dentist elf. Yeah, okay. It's Santa's son. <laughs> Is he really Santa's son? I was visiting my old friend King Moonraiser and noticed his eyes gleamed with a strange green glow. <laughs> when suddenly he imprisoned me beneath the ice before collapsing upon his golden days. Well, gee, thanks for freeing me. Maybe you should take these. And he gives you a couple of things. Dissertations on Dental Mancer Sorceries, Grimoire. Dental Mancer First level sorcery. winter spell Dental Mancy. Floss. <laughs> Rope work. Magic floss. Kill. The Leatherbound book contains the first level wizard spell. The spell may be cast as a scroll or inscribed into a wizard's memoir for further use. And a small box marked floss. This palm sized box is marked with the strange word floss and contains a wound waxen string within. Removing a portion of wax string acts as the first level wizard spell rope work. Anyone can use the magical string by removing a portion and making a spell check using 1d20 plus intelligence modifier. Note that spellcasters who use the magical string also add their caster level to the check. The magical box contains enough string for 20 uses. And you also see the Dentalmancy spell? Yep. I ain't reading that. Probably the uh, elf boss should take the magic stuff. Yep. Got it. No, read the whole page of Dentalmancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dentalmancy. 
Okay, so you folks are right about here in this central hall of the court of King Moonracer with Hermie the Elf. Hermie, Santa, and Christmas Town are in trouble. We were looking for you to save you. Can you help him? I'd really like to help him, but I really got to help King Moonracer here first. He's my friend. All right, more power to you. Maybe you guys can go take a look at him, maybe, and see if you can cure him? Yeah. Because I sure well, can't. We can have a look. Try and beat some sense into him. Yeah, let's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll floss it out of him. <laughs> okay, so going down here. Languishing upon his golden days is the limp form of King Moonracer, an ancient manticore whose muscular lion body now slumps oh, yeah. upon the throne. His hooded eyes agleam with a sickly green pallor. With laboured movement, he motions towards the northwestern tower with one of his great barbed wings. Shall we go to the northwestern tower? Yeah. Unless that's like a trap. Yep. A heavy stone staircase winds its way up the tower to a rooftop observation platform. Howling, sweet, sour winds blow across the tower's summit, and a large telescope is mounted here. Hmm. wonder if looking through that Let's telescope that got him into trouble. Cindy Lou will have a look through. Gazing into the powerful telescope reveals the image of an impossible spire rising high into the snow-swept skies. Its near vertical slope of snow and ice culminates at a large cave opening upon its summit. A sickly green light radiates from within. Could that be the Grinch's cave? Now we know where to go. So maybe the, he looked at the Grinch and the Grinch sort of took him, you know, made him feel bad or something. No, she said, uh, they said that he flew north. So maybe he saw it and went to go check it out. And then the Grinch ah. Grinchified him. And then he came back here. Hermes found him. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to get you Hermes. But Hermes under the ice. And then he went collapsed. Maybe. I don't know. That sounds about right. It could be plausible or not. But let's go find Rudolph now. We keep getting things that might be helpful. Plus, he's in trouble. Hermes. So wait, uh, Moon Racer is just sleeping? Yeah, pretty much. He's in. He looks like he's suffering the same kind of topper that Santa Claus is. Okay, yeah. okay. Except in so, a more, he's processing it in a more manticore kind of way. Looks like the only way out is through. Well, you don't have to go all that way on foot, says Hermie. What do you mean? King Moon Racers got a hot air balloon. Of course she does. You can just scoot on up the southeast tower and it should be moored there. Can we, can we take that all the way to the far north? Oh, sure. King Moon Racers taking it all kinds of places. Good. We can steer it just as well as the Wizard of Oz steered his. Exactly. Beyond the opening lies a frigid tower. Howling winds swirl down from its roofless summit. Suspended in midair, partway up the turret, is a colorful hot air balloon. A thick rope dangling from its large basket lies coiled at your feet. Well, up we go. Let's go! You all climb in. What is your destination? The cave where Rudolph is? We haven't hit, found Rudolph Yeah, we've yet. got this cave. We've got the Grinch cave. Yep. And we've got Rudolph. I suggest we go get Rudolph. He's the third hero. Correct. So you take off and head north. Due to the gusting, sour, sweet winds that blow over the land, I need somebody to make a successful DC-11 reflex save to safely navigate between the locations here. Oh, wait. Uh, SD might be actually decent with reflex. Oh, not Cindy especially. Cindy Lou has a plus three. Plus two. Oh, plus three sounds great. All right. We'll give it a try. 14. Very nice, very nice. You touch down at the foot of an icy mountain. A large cave opening yawns like a great mouth in the side of a steep hill. The rancid musk of wet fur emanates from within. Don't get too excited. <laughs> oh, that's it. That was a very... Yeah, <laughs> I was <laughs> expecting a longer paragraph there. Yeah, so was I, actually. That, that's it. The floor, the floor is yours. Uh, wet fur, eh? Uh, does fireball detect the distinct smell of wet reindeer fur? Who would know better than another reindeer? Yes, he does. Ha! 
He does smell wet reindeer fur, but he smells something much stronger and more powerful than that, too. Oh, what's that? Something he can't identify. Hmm. Something abominable. Yeah, it's going to be an abominable thing. That's, I think that's exactly hmm. what it's going to be. Abominable crumpet? Perhaps we should make our way... Wait, I had voices for these guys. So Fireball is kind of gruff, but lovable. And, oh yeah, it's S.D. Kluger. Maybe we should make our way in. See what we can find there. Uh, I'm not hitting the yeah, voice quite it's right. Time to get the gist. Let's get this bubble out of here. Well, now we got to get in there and find Rudolph. We judge. Wonder if there will be another puzzle. All the way. Let's go all the way. So this is like we're running out of light here. We're going into a tunnel, or is this a pass? I'm sorry. No, it's it a is tunnel. a cave. It is a large cave, cave, a large ice cave. Uh, does somebody want to, with InfraVision, want to take the first few steps in before we go yeah, in Cindy and spoil that with lights? Cindy Lou, Cindy Lou, Lou. Yeah. How, far, how far is she going to go in? Um, Until I can see more. Feet, 50 feet? Looks good. I like it. You can see about 60 feet in there. Uh-oh. I see. Do you see those giant, abominable snowman feet? Yes. Cindy Lou will hop back and say, there's an abominable snow monster in there. Just as Cindy Lou is turning to tell everyone, the cold silence of the gloom-filled cavern is broken by a bestial roar as a great hulking monstrosity of fangs and claws rushes towards you. Standing well over 20 feet tall with snow-white fur and an oversized mouth filled with giant razor-sharp teeth. It clasps a great iced stalactite from the ceiling of the cave and pulls it down, wielding it like a giant club. Roll for initiative. <laughs> what could go wrong? SD has a five. Wow, Sam, you wasted a good 20 there. So my two will wait quietly for their turn. Boss out a nine and Mrs. Claus is a five. Cindy Lou has also got a nine. Wow, lots of doubles there. Let's see what Mr. Abominable has. Eleven. In between. Okay. So this thing is about five, ten, about thirty-five feet away from you. Well, Sam cannot go thirty-five feet. What he will do is go half the distance and ready in action to swipe at the guy with his magical pickaxe when it goes when the abominable snow monster comes by. Okay. This guy comes bounding on down right about here. Oh yeah, swipe, swipe. Uh oh. Okay, you gotta do a swipe swipe. I will give mm -hmm. you I will give you an advantage seeing as you're behind him. So I will give you a Ooh. he doesn't see you, so let me see. What shall we do? Oh, I know. Roll a D thirty. A D thirty, okay. It's Christmas. First All right. D thirty. First D thirty. I just want somebody to roll a D thirty. Haven't done one yet. <laughs> a six. Wow. For a, six. Okay. a D30 wow. with, with a plus two. A six. Okay. Okay. He got overexcited. Sam just swings and misses and falls to the ground. And But, you know, he gets back up quick enough. Now this abominable snow monster of the north lets out a blood-curdling roar and swings its mighty stalactite towards uh who we got here i believe this is cindy lou who he's gonna go right out at cindy lou actually i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna yes he is he's gonna get he's gonna swing at cindy lou oh my god that is oh jeez. oh shit <laughs> yeah okay that is the 23 that is a crit oh my gosh shit. this might kill her good thing we got a cleric following you yeah, is it a giant? I mean, I guess it. It would fit all of the the right ones. If you go down, you got two rounds in which you can be healed to prevent death. We've gotten all too familiar with that <laughs> in recent <laughs> sessions. As, We're as pros we at the verge of death scenario. I'm gonna go and say the abominable snowman is a giant. Hmm. That seems fair. I know it seems fair. It also seems cruel. The morphologies. I'll works. just make sure you roll poorly here. It's Christmas. That is a one. Uh, a crushing blow. This attack inflicts plus one d8 damage, and the, right. and the character's spine is compressed. Oof. The per the PC permanently loses one d6 inches of height. Wow. <laughs> She's permanently going to lose 
four inches of height. But more importantly, this is going to deal for seven, seven. points. Okay, that could have been way worse. Damage. All right, she's still alive. Yay. <laughs> okay, uh, now either Cindy Lou or Boss Elf are up. Take your pick. Hey, who had that tooth spell or whatever that was? Got it. That Got Mrs. It. Claus? All right. Cindy Lou has a special ability. She can sing Christmas carols with the most melodic and merry voice, causing Ooh. enemies to find it difficult to focus on attacks. Enemies who fail a DC 13 will save, suffer a minus two penalty to attack rolls for the duration of her song. So she's going to start singing, Da who do res, ga who res, welcome right. Christmas every A D13? DC 13 will save. Will. Uh, oh, he has no will bonus. Ooh, he fails. That's All right. a five. And she's going to keep that singing up. And can she attack at the same time she's singing? I'm sure you can. Why not, right? Yes, absolutely. It's Christmas. Christmas. David would probably rap while he was attacking, but the principle right. looks the same. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. A 17. Yes, a 17 hits handily. See, this is how it's done, Sam. Keep singing. Is it minus? Oh, really? Oh, her strength is terrible. Okay, well, there we go. Five. Five, that's, that's not bad. It's not bad. Boss Elf is up. So, seeing Cindy Lou do her thing, does Boss Elf see the Bumble having a mouthful of big, sharp, pointy teeth? Of course, you can't miss them. Would Boss Elf know about the Bumble's prevalence for eating things and people and such? He would have heard rumors, for sure. Hey, I know Cindy Lou told us that the Bumble showed up, but I don't hear anything about the teeth, but screw it. All right. Seeing how angry and mean and hearing the hearsay of <laughs> all in Christmas Town about how the Bumble likes to eat things, Boss Elf is going to whip out the Dental Mancy Grimoire, and we're going to try and get this baby where she's got to go. Burn some luck. Seven and a three is a ten, so I would have to burn eight luck. Burn an eight luck to make this thing work. The target's teeth immediately fall out, leaving them with a mouthful of gums. Because those creatures lose their bite attack. It doesn't say that there's a save. Yes, the spitting chiclet spell works spectacularly. And all of the abominable's teeth fall out of its mouth and tinkle like a gentle ice shower onto the floor below. Turning him into a very humble bumble. And he... <laughs> Covers his mouth in shame and flees past you out of the cave. What? Excellent. Done. All right, let's go save Rudolph. Yeah. Although I wouldn't mind um, if anybody can help me out a little bit. Oh, right. Yeah. Help you out with what? You have to look down a little bit farther than you're used to when you talk to him. Help you out with what? Is it, is it not obvious? <laughs> no. You have to ask for things that are done to you, especially when you're talking to me. I can't read your mind. I have to read my husband's mind all the time, and it sucks. Well, Mrs. Claus, I got mighty smashed hard. I would like to feel a little bit better, if you know what I'm saying. Well, did you eat too you many Christmas coke? cookies? Okay. Did you, you sure it comes from being stabbed? Cindy Lou is going to stab Mrs. Claus in the face. <laughs> well, then, then she's just going <laughs> to heal herself. <laughs> you get one hit dice. Uh, if what? What's your... Uh, hold on. What's it? Cindy. Cindy is Cindy Lou who? lawful. I am lawful. I am lawful. You, you get two. Two hit points or two hit dice? Two hit dice. Thank you, Miss Claus. You're welcome. That's a perfectly cromulent result. A uh, full restoration of everything you lost, is it not? Oh, I get my height back? Oh, you don't get your height back. No, you're still no, four inches shorter. Points. Can we just stretch her out? <laughs> she still has a compressed spine. A frozen tarn occupies the far side of the cavern, its edge lined with tall stalagmites that stretch from floor to ceiling, forming a natural prison cell. Within are the huddled forms of seven reindeer trapped within this prison of ice. Seven? Oh, because Rudolph There's was Rudolph. out with his family. Don't worry, Rudolph. We'll get you out of there in a hurry. You say stalagmites, right? Uh, it's making a wall, right? I mean, surely a magic mining pick can crash through some stalagmites. That's what Sam thinks. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. You can knock them right out of the way. So, yeah, you have at it. 
Just roll three d six a couple times. Yeah, I mean you can't miss it. Fifteen. Smash. Yeah, it splinters and shards of ice fall from the ceiling, and some of the stalagmites start to collapse and crack and splinter. And you feel like you're about halfway through there. Maybe another good swing should get you through, you think? Oh yeah, let's do it. And not as good a roll. Eleven. That opens up. You open up a gap in the uh, icy prison bars and the reindeer all dash out to the freedom of the cave. And they all run around you, cheering your praises and declaring you to be a chip off the old antlers. (laughs) And Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, comes up to you and says, Gee, mister, I can't... I don't know how he does it. I know he's... uh, He's got that kind of really whiny nasally voice. And says, gee, mister, thanks for saving us. You've saved my family's Christmas. Well, don't just thank me. We all helped. Well, we can all fly. If you guys need flying anywhere, we can sure help you. Uh, so we, what's next? We need to find the Grinch now? Did we ask them to take us to the Grinch's cave? Whoa, the Grinch's cave? That's on Mount Crumpet. Yeah. It's pretty windy up that way, but sure, we can take you. Sounds a lot better than taking our balloon if it's going to be that windy. <laughs> You're going to have to hold on tight, though. Well, we can do that. Well, well, me and my family have enough. We can sure carry you all. Hop on board. Yes. Wait a minute. Everybody, use some of this. And Boss Elf is going to start ripping off some dental floss and turning them uh... into rope. So that everybody can, like, make reins and kind of, like, make sure they're kind of lashed on to the reindeer. Mm. Let's make sure we do this right. Herman isn't giving us for nothing. Very nice. Okay. So uh, you all hop aboard the magical reindeer and start flying towards the top of Mount Crump. (laughs) But as you're getting there, the winds just become so much stronger and perilous. The sour, sweet winds that blow from the summit of Mount Crumpet. So I'm going to need a DC 18 agility check from all six PCs. All right. No worries. What could go wrong? Everything. I I am rolling like ass today. That's for sure. Oh, my gosh. Cindy Lou (laughs) rolled a five. Jesus. She's got a a two. Uh, Yeah, this is bad. Okay, SD oh is one off. He's going to spend a luck to bring him, off, him up to 18. I was at 17. I, I don't have enough luck to burn to get myself up there. I missed by way too much. No amount of luck is going to save me. Here. You sure? Yeah. Even with the plus three. Fireball yeah. fails. I, the plus three is included. I, have, I don't have enough luck. I, I don't have it. We are, uh, li- we are tied on with floss. Uh, Magic floss. So, boss elf... Rolled it. What is it? Twenty three. It was a reflex save. Oh yeah, Mrs. Claus is a five. No, it was an agility save. Oh, it was an a, an agility, agility save. Check. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, yeah, she. Yeah. yeah boss Elf is twenty one. Mrs. Claus is. She rolled a two. It's not gonna do it. Okay. Boss Elf is good. You did say that you're all tied on by this floss. Yes. So I could reduce that down to like a DC fifteen, but I think everyone who's failed Ooh. still fails. Yeah, I'm still Sam and Cindy Lou amount. certainly does. But SD doesn't fireball? need to spend that luck then. Okay. No, SD can keep his luck, sure. Yay. And Fireball, does Fireball still fail? Fireball failed. Yeah. Nice. Fireball did not come so close. Flying reindeer failed. At 15, I could burn almost all of Cindy Lou's luck to make it, luck to make it. But yeah, even spending all of Sam's luck, I'm still short. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. Rudolph shouts over the howling wind. Oh, gee, this wind is so strong. Maybe we should try and make an emergency landing. Or if you want, we can still try and keep flying on through. My two characters are too busy hanging on for dear life and or falling to their death to say anything. Should we land and try to go up on foot? Let's land! It's not working! So, yeah, Boss Elf, the only one, like, he's trying to hold on to Mrs. Claus and working his way we down. We should go through the mines of Moria. The, the reindeer. <laughs> There's no mines of Moria in this. There's just the mines of Mount Mm -hmm. Crumpet. So, um, yeah, the reindeer all descend to the foot of Mount Crumpet. And the winds aren't quite as strong down here. 
When they land, they bid you farewell and say that they would like to keep helping you, but Rudolph's got to get his family home for Christmas. So you stand within the purple shadow of an impossible spire of snow and ice that rises up into the windswept skies, its fog-shrouded summit aglow with a sickly green luminescence. Buffeted by the sour sweet winds that howl down from above, you catch sight of a bare track of cold stone that snakes its way up the near vertical face. Well, that looks difficult, Fireball says. Let's try this again. And up we go. How are you going to go? Are you going to try and scale the mountain, or are you going to just follow, try and go up this path? I think we got to follow the path. Right? No, right. I mean, yeah. I, no, no. That's my vote. Yeah, path. Yep. path. I don't think there's any question about it. This is a question. You scuff along a winding path of bare stone. To each scuff, side scuff, are scuff. tumbling heights of snow and ice and the persistent taint of a sour sweet wind that howls from above. Press onward? Yes. yes. Okay. The path suddenly forks in two. One branch continues up the mountain while the other winds its way to a frozen mountain lake its ice-crusted surface a mirror of the darkening skies above. Well, what is this? What is this? Do we go up or do we go to the lake? Well, when we looked through the telescope, it looked like the Grinch cave was up toward the top, right? Yeah, it did. But maybe we could find something at the lake that will help us. It's worth a try. Or should we go straight up? Mrs. Claus, what do you think? If we look quick... Well, what do we think we're going to find? We already got stuff that I could try and do something against them. I don't know. Fine. We'll go take a look at the lake. If it looks scary, we run away and run away fast. Seems like a good plan. Okay. Sure. Suddenly, the ice heaves and bursts with a resounding crack as Yay. great lizard-like heads, each the size of a draft horse, rise up from the frozen waters on undulating serpentine necks. Oversized mouths open upon their blunt-nosed faces, revealing rows of needle-sharp teeth as they shriek and yowl to the heavens. Their thunderous roars draw down an avalanche from the mountaintops. The avalanche hits with a fury, sweeping you all down the mountainside in a torrent of ice and snow for 3d6 damage Jesus. oh my gosh or you can do a dc 13 reflex check to take half damage and oh I'm rolling, yes i'm rolling the the hack and crack damage right here and it was it was a reflex save you said reflex save of 13 for, and thank you fi five damage and i will round it down for half fireball made it 13 oh made it okay so it's two points of damage then. They frowned in half. Very nice. Okay, that's not so bad. Boss L filled with a four. Mrs. Claus comes in with a 16. Right. Oh, gosh. Sam will spend a point of luck. Two damage for Mrs. Claus, five damage for Sam. Or Boss Elf. Got it. Thank you. ST's going to eat that. He'd have to spend pretty much all of his luck to get that. <laughs> Sad to say. Six. Well, no, you have to spend seven luck. You'd have four left. Nah, I'm going to eat it. Okay, SD5. That could have been worse. And Fireball took... Fireball... Took, just took the two, yeah. All right. Okay, so you find yourselves once again at the foot of Mount Crumpet. <laughs> Is the path still accessible? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, again, you make your way back up, and the path suddenly forks in two. One branch continues up the mountain... Do I need to read on while the other winds its way to a this frozen mountain lake? This time the lake will work lake. for sure. <laughs> a frozen mountain lake filled with shrieking hacking cracks. There's six let's, of let's, these let's, beasts oh. in there. Let's no. not go that way. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go that way. They don't have the Christmas spirit. The barren landscape gives way to a copse of wind-shorn trees. Their blackened and frozen stumps rising out of the ground like rotting monuments in a desolate graveyard. Ugh. Nice. Graveyard? Where are we? <laughs> I, th I didn't think people died in Christmas land. Yeah, Colin. Well, whatever it is, we gotta keep going. Must push through. Stop the Grinch. You gonna push on through? We're gonna break on Get through to the other side. All right. As you pass through the copse of rotted tree stumps, you hear the growling of creatures. It sounds like a small kind of dog. And it's this 
it's just this incessant growling and you see coming out of the trees about 20 of these creatures and they're these hairless rodent-like creatures about the size of a small dog and they just make this constant incessant growling noise and these growls echo throughout the whole of mount crumpet they're staying away from you they're all staying about you know six feet away from you but this constant growling this constant chattering seems to have alerted something else Mm. and from above you you see bounding down the track towards you this emaciated bindly looking hound with a large antler protruding from the top of its skull. <laughs> it's Sam. Roughly the size of a horse. Wasn't that the name of of uh, the Grinch's yep. poor... Yeah, was it Sam? Uh-huh. It's, uh, it was Max, Max I believe. Max. Max. Right. Max. I think it was Max. Yeah, yeah thank you. brown oh, pelt hangs off its skeletal frame in oh, loose folds, and its eyes shine with demonic fury. Roll for initiative. Oh, dear. Okay. Yes. Oh, this is good. Okay, fireball. 14. What's his initiative modifier? 2. 16 for fireball. Wow. Sam with a 19. Cindy uh-huh. Lou with a 7. Max has a 10. SD Boss Elf with, with an 18. Nine. SD with a 19. And Mrs. Claus with a 10. Yeah. So yeah, these are these gree grumps going to Yeah, these gree grumps are all about you know six feet away. They're they're keeping their distance from you. But this this demon dog is just just means business. However, Sam the Snowman is up. So Sam the Snowman channels his best thundar and says, Demon dogs and then nice. moves to spike him in the head with his magic ass hacks. Come on, let's get a roll this time. That's more like a oh, 25. Oh. I hope that's a hit. Oh, yeah. it's absolutely a hit. Sorry, Max. He, he, I have to admit, he feels a little bit bad about this. So so here's the damage. Seven. That's that's going to hurt. Yeah, the dog yelps. Let's add a, yeah, a pained yelp. Oh, sad. You can just see all of its its rib cage just oh. protruding through this like skeletal frame of it. Oh, it's and, uh, yeah, I it's like, like it. really emaciated and oh, you can't like attack us, man. Looking. So let me see. Boss Elf is up. Hey, Boss Elf is gonna do a little funny dance, and then he's going to waggle his fingers at Max and cast color spray. So it's oh, Will boy. versus Check. So oh, wrong one. There we go. Right one. Okay, so rolled an eighteen. So three targets within range can be targeted. It must make two will saves to be affected. A DC 18 will save? Correct. Uh, okay. That is a 12. So he fails okay. the first will save. That's one. So they're blinded. He's blinded and he needs to make another will save? Yes, to be to, to figure out if he's knocked That's unconscious. That's a 16. So that would not make it. Unless you wanted to do anything to make it an 18 and then pass. Oh, he can't do anything to make it an 18. No. Oh, you can't burn luck? Just we can? Okay, fair enough. No. Um, so then that is... But he is a GM. He can cheat. Uh, so this is going to last for nine rounds. Okay, so for nine rounds, this emaci- emaciated, ravenous, mad dog is... Blind is and unconscious. Blind, is blind and unconscious? Yes. Okay. Do with it what you will. When you render it unconscious, the demon dog seems to revert back to a docile, pleasant-looking little dog. And as you look closer, you can see that it's just a normal little dog, and he has a bit of an antler tied to the top of his head with some red thread. Well, so I was going to cut it off. Mm. Or, or take it off. Okay. So you take it off. And all of the rat cre- the little rat dog creatures crawl back into their dumps. Does does uh the now reduced in size Max still have a gaping pickaxe wound? Yes, he does. Just just to make this the feel good story that it really is. Yeah. 
That was Damon's contribution to Christmas. Oh. Sad. <laughs> it's okay, children listening. Damon isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you run free, Max? Run free. Get out of here. Don't go to the lake. Get down the mountain, Max. Well, he's he's unconscious, thanks to you. That's right. He's so boss, boss Elf is going to... And boss Elf is just going to kind of push the body of Max <laughs> towards the, the bottom of Mount Crumpet. And when okay. Max is no further than the edge of his hands, then he's going to turn around and like, all right, up we go. <laughs> all right. Are you going to follow? Are you going to follow the path continuing upwards? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, okay. Through the blistering wind and fog, you see a cave mouth that cuts into the side of the mountain like a wound. A pallid green light spills forth, casting everything in its sickly pallor. We made it. Well, game's over. All we gotta do is make his heart grow three sizes. The true spirit of Christmas lies in your... Ah! That's what Santa said. That's what my husband told me. You tread a lonely cavern with natural stone walls and a floor comprised of solid ice. Its haunted depths are as silent as the grave, save for the howling of a sharp wind that is fraught with an oppressive sour sweet odour. A cadaverous green light shines from deep within, casting everything in its sickly pallor. And is uh, the green light, is that just kind of emanating from the walls? Is it coming from a, a point? Up ahead, you see a large stone days, like some forgotten isle rising from a frozen sea. Atop the days rests the origin of this strange green light, a queer-looking stone trapped within a block of sheer ice. The stone's sides shimmer and swirl with the hypnotic rhythm of cosmic light and darkness that churn and eddy to form a ghastly green glow. I'm still betting that's the Christmas gem. I thought it would be less ghastly. Well, if we free it from the ice, maybe it will be. Ooh, yeah. We don't see any signs of actual Grinchly activity right now? No, you see nothing in here. Uh, SD looks around for Grinch Spore. You're still at the cave entrance, so you're just yeah. observing this. Move ahead. Yes. Excellent. Uh, what could go wrong? Wait, can somebody check for traps? No. <laughs> well, you could. <laughs> You oh, wait, SD is a thief. Jesus, I'm the thief. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> SD is going to check for traps on the way through. Don't you roll, Rob. Know your roll. Find traps. Seeing as it's Christmas, I'm going to let you do that. Well, I, th- that's what a thief does. Okay. 12 but plus 6, 18 on my check for, or my find trap in this game. You find a large pit trap at the entrance to the cave. It's basically 10 feet square. Aha. Uh-huh. Gotta, occasionally got to remember what game we're playing here. Yes, checking for traps. Yes. Uh, I'm always amazed that nobody ever checks for traps <laughs> in this thing. Well, that's because somebody forgot his one of his characters of was, the, was the thief. Yeah, Looks like a big uh, fall if you go this way. Uh, is there enough room to squeeze by it, uh, by one side or the other? There is not, but you could make an effort to disable it, seeing as you are a thief. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, let's Good try luck. that. We're counting on you. Um, okay, so this is disable trap. You're telling me you're going to disable yeah. the trap now, are we? Okay, for sixteen plus five, twenty-one. My oh friend. no, not a problem. It was just a DC nine, <laughs> and the contraption is rendered harmless. So as you move in, you move in past the trap to the location you said you wanted to go before. A massive overstuffed red sack rests in a rickety old sleigh. It's top bursting with presents, ribbons, wrappings, and trimmings. Those are all the Whoville truth. Everything from roller skates, bicycles, popcorn and drums, tricycles, tum tinglers, pop guns, zum zoozlers, who pudding and plums. Hey, that rhymes. There's even a fully cooked who feast with the last can of who hash and a rare roast beef. And also. Piles and piles of cardboard boxes. No, it's roast beef. Huh. Roast beast. No, they. Oh, I thought they couldn't get the trademark for it. But I know they got it in trademark. here. Roast beast. They don't have Tom Tinglers and Zumzuzlers. I added that because. Ah. Are there goo guns yes. in there? 
Looks like the Grinch is up to his old tricks again, stealing Christmas and whatnot. Have you heard from your friends in Whoville that they uh, done got Christmas stolen again? Well, it's not on my character sheet. Hmm. Nice. As you approach the ramshackle sleigh, some of the cardboard boxes begin to move. And assemble mm -hmm. themselves. <laughs> of course. And before you stands a large cardboard golem. <laughs> U.S. Postal Service. In the shape of a jolly reindeer standing approximately seven feet high. It trundles towards you soundlessly. Roll for initiative. Yes! <laughs> yes! That's what you meant by standing up. Oh, shit. I went down to the DCC people and Oh. I showed them the picture. I said, start it up. And my oh. God, they started it up. Oh, they did? Holy crap. Oh, that's awesome. I got a fully started Jolly Reindeer cardboard box gun. Oh, now that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's yes. really fun. Oh, damn. Okay, I love it. Okay, so Fireball and with an Ocho. Christopher Willis and Russell Cohn are the folks Good who did work, it for us. gentlemen. I got an 18 for... Um, for the elf, for Basso. I got an 8 for Fireball, 5 for SD. Mrs. Claus is at a 7. That's not so bad. Cindy Lou is 3? No. Yes, 3. Yeah, Cindy, Cindy, Lou, Lou, is three. Cindy, rule, Cindy Lou has had terrible rolls all night, save for like 1 or 2. Sam is 19. He's been quick. Box Golem has a 4. Yeah, so Sam, once again, leads the charge. I'm going to deliver this to you. And Ross, the box deliver you. <laughs> oh, gee, many Christmas. Eleven. Eleven. Uh, Eleven hits. Eleven hits. Well, yes. All right. Uh, well, it is made of cardboard. It's true enough. <sighs> cardboard. Eight points. Number. Eight points of damage. Eight points of crushing damage. Eight points of crushing damage. You do cr crush and tear through many of the boxes. Awesome. Revealing sharp cardboard edges. <laughs> okay, uh, Boss Elf is up. Boss Elf is going to jump back and make an attempt at casting Magic Missile. Magic Missile at the darkness. Oh. Okay, so I rolled a 20. So that's going to be 23. All right, so that's five Magic Missiles. Yeah! 17 magic missile damage. Oh, yeah. This thing is busted open. It, its red nose is hanging off by a piece of tape, pathetically, and most of the boxes are just torn asunder. But it just relentlessly <laughs> comes towards you as a, an unstoppable cardboard box jolly reindeer golem. Ooh, we're getting way low numbers. Uh Fireball is up. What? We're down to Fireball? Wow. Yes, okay. we're down to eight, eight is the next highest one. All right. Fireball, I think. Yeah. Uh, he's going to just head down and make an antler attack and try to finish demolishing this thing. 19 plus 3. So 22. Oh, 22 hits. Absolutely. So I didn't really pick a specific feat. That's okay. I'm just trying to smash. I was like, uh, so D8 plus 1. For my hit. Uh, plus plus your D8. deep die, so plus three. Oh, okay. So D8 plus four total. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's Ooh, for the fun of the for warrior. For 12. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll do it. But. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's confetti now. The construct just erupts in just, like you said, shards of paper. It's just shredded to, like, nothingness. But I need a DC8 reflex save. Okay. I see. A three? Two. Oof. It is a. How did you know? I hadn't rolled a three yet, but I rolled a three. I thought you, I thought you said three. No. I could have sworn you said three. Uh oh. Uh, yes. So. What was. The, hold on. What was the difficulty? I might blow luck eight. on this one. Three. Five luck. Sure. I think we're winding down here. You're gonna, gonna you're gonna blow five luck against a cardboard uh, box. Yeah, probably okay. not. No, I'll just I'll take my I'll take the consequences. Okay. Um yes. So No no truth, truth. Fireball's selfless <laughs> attack unfortunately exposed him to the Paper construct's cuts. infected peppermint paper cut ability. 
Ooh. against its sharp. Did they really stat that out? Edges? Yes. That's I'll tell you it as, soon as, as soon as we're done here. So if that results in that. Oh, fuck, it results in eight paper, eight paper cuts, <laughs> inflicting three damage. So eight paper cuts, inflicting twenty-four hit points of damage. Jesus. <laughs> I should have spent the lock. Okay. I am still alive because the fireball actually came in with 31. So I'm at, but I'm at 29. I'm on the verge of minty death. Okay. Wow. Um, yes. A Jolly Reindeer cardboard box golem made by festive wizards using several cardboard boxes magically adhered together. Upon its death, 1d4 of the boxes have random holiday gifts in them. Ooh. <laughs> Mrs. Claus is going to run up to fireball and try and heal him. Hopefully Bass of Tracen. Is in one of the boxes. Uh, ooh, four. There's four presents here. So what are we going to have? Let's I will see. happily accept that healing. I'll happily accept that healing, Mrs. Claus. Two, two hit dice. Okay. Um, Pocho. So 14 back. Okay. Much obliged, Mrs. C. I do what I can. You find a fruitcake? And some strange polyhedral dice and two notebooks. <laughs> you find, oh, there's a gift card. <laughs> nice. Two? Gift card. It's a gift card worth five gold pieces for Gorblind's Orb Emporium. <laughs> where you could buy, you could buy a small orb for three gold pieces, <laughs> medium orb for six, and large oh. orbs for nine. Gorblind's Orb Emporium. Oh, that's brilliant. You still have one last thing here. Oh, and that's a two. Uh, oh, some warm socks. Worth <laughs> worth only about three copper pieces, but clearly handmade by someone who cares. <laughs> that's so good. Okay. Yeah, that was fun. Thanks for that. <laughs> that was a nice little uh, Christmas gift. Yeah. That was fun. So, we are back in this cavern. And you're at the foot of this daze. Up ahead looms a large stone daze, like some forgotten isle rising from a frozen sea. Atop the daze rests the origin of the strange green light. A queer-looking stone trapped within a block of sheer ice. The stone's sides shimmer and swirl with the hypnotic rhythm of cosmic light and darkness that churn and eddy to form a ghastly green glow. Does it look like hmm. there's anything inside the ice? There's the Grinch! There's that queer-looking green stone encased in that look of ice. Does it look like a strawberry? Can Mrs. Mrs. Claus wants to take a look. As you approach the encased stone, a strange humanoid figure rises from behind the block of ice. A pear-shaped, pot-bellied creature covered in sickly green fur. Its snub-nosed, cat-like face gazes at you with dull yellow eyes and a crooked, termite-filled grin. You have come to save Christmas, but it is too late. It won't matter. There will be no Christmas this year, or any year hereafter. Roll for initiative. <laughs> well, Sounds I mean, familiar. he says we're too late, so I guess we can just leave. Yeah, okay. Oh, well. Yeah, tough break. I didn't do my best bar as Carla for nothing. Come on. Ooh, a good initiative roll. Fireball. That's a 20. For wow, a Cindy Lou just cannot roll. Get, get dice. But Sam is just like in there every time. It's been the same pattern Ooh. all day. 15 for SD. Ooh, boss elf is with my you Best there. initiative round yet. Mrs. Claus with a three. Oh. The Grinch with 19. Ha. Ooh, okay. Got Sam and Fireball going before him anyway. Well, it's... SD Kruger with a 15. Wow, you're all rolling high when it counts. Nope. Not all of us. Boss Elf with a 15. Mrs. Claus with a 3. And Cindy Lou? 6. No, I'm sorry, 8. Which is our best roll. Your best roll of the night. Trending upwards. Trending upwards. You're all up on the days. Might as well be. We'll get there, yeah. Well, before we get going, you're going to have to deal with a little thing called Dink Stag Stunk. <laughs> so anyone within 15 feet of the Grinch is overwhelmed by the odor of unwashed socks and garlic. 
I need you all to make a DC 8 fortitude save. So fireball clears that easily. No problems. Jesus, barely. Yeah, wow. Cindy Lou makes barely it. Is he makes it. Yeah. I'll take it. 15. Yeah, Cindy mm-hmm. Lou, I don't think has rolled above a 6 all night on any D20. That's like 10 rolls. At some point, it's got to turn. She's been rolling a lot, and it's been bad. I got an 18 and a 15. Nice. You all pass the stink admirably. Okay, Sam or Fireball are up. All right, Sam. Uh, well, well, what's your fi- what's your uh, mean, agility, Fireball? Fireball's agility is eleven. Your first. Okay. Yeah, old fashioned uh, antler attack. Let's see, what deed will I aim for? Try goring. Well, no, I don't want to be stuck in on this guy, given that I'm heavily damaged. Stripping works pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I think. Oh, how about this? I'm gonna. Okay, here's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to like slam him but kind of run by and like spin him so that he's kind of like facing backward towards sam Ooh. Yeah, so that's okay. that's the uh, so let's see if it's so 15 ugh, 16 that is all oh no wait so 17 yeah well that hits my d dies a one though so i don't think i do the turn nope. thing three or above the mighty d does not happen but the the attack succeeds Okay, so it's going to be a D8 plus one plus one for my crappy deed die. So a rockin' four damage. Yes. <laughs> so I kind of graze him. Oh, as okay. I, go. I think Fireball, Fireball is a little, he wasn't thinking it, but he was a little shy after his last target exploded and like lacerated him almost to death. He's still stinking from the peppermint. The Grinch still stumbles back from the impact, and as he does so, the gem within the ice swirls green and black and seems to shrink in size within its prison of ice. Wait a minute. If we kill the Grinch, do we destroy the Christmas gem? Only one way to find out. Sam is up. Sam's going to go after the ice, because that is especially what his pickaxe is good at. Oh, yeah. Does he have to make an attack roll against the ice? No, I will allow it. All Just right. go ahead and do your thing. Here goes the damage. Ten. The pickaxe doesn't even dent the ice. Mm. That's no ice that I've ever seen. It would appear to be some unusual magical ice. Okay. The Ooh. Grinch is up. Can you make a DC8 reflex save for Fireball, please? Yes, I made it. Nine plus. Okay. Yeah, oh, I'm clean. Cuddly, cuddly as a cactus. Anyone who deals melee damage against the Grinch. Must succeed in a DC8 reflex save or come into contact with his prickly green fur. Aha. For 1d4. Oh, I kept him at antler's length. The Grinch pulls a whip from his side and lashes out at Fireball. Four. Oh. be a 22. So that is going to hit. And that is going to do two hit points of whippy whipping damage. Oh. Just two? Yeah, just two. Okay, that's not so bad. Uh, who we got? Either Boss Elf or SD Kruger are up. Uh, go ahead. SD is going to shoot, going to hang back, yeah, and shoot his longbow. I'm supposed to only have a D16 initiative when I use the longbow. Interesting. Okay, so D20 plus 2. For a 15. 15 hits. Five. Okay. The Grinch lets out a gasp of pain. The drained stone within the ice swirls more, even more violently in green and black and seems to shrink even slightly more. Boss Elf is up. Why are you going to steal Christmas? Why, why are you going to do this? This isn't what we're, we're doing this time of year. We got to love each other. And Boss Elf is going to try and color spray him, try and blind him. Uh, um, fuck, no, no, roll the two. Um, so that is not going to work. And I lose that spell. <laughs> okay. Cindy Lou Who. All right. Cindy Lou begins singing. Trim up the tree with Christmas stuff like bingo balls and hoo hoo fluff. Trim up the tree with goo-hoo guns and bizzle blicks at once. The Grinch needs to make a will save at DC 13. His will's got to be pretty high. What have we got? Oh, yeah. He's going to fail. Okay, he did not fail. No, he does not fail. But right. strangely, as he hears the song, 
you notice that the gem inside the ice seems to increase a little bit and shine a little bit brighter. And we need to sing to the Grinch, not poke him. So she raises her voice and sings even more. All right. Uh, Mrs. Claus is up with her heart of gold. <laughs> it's got to be the Yule light. It's got to be the Yule light. I'm going to try casting Word of Command. So, roll some jiggers. So, I rolled a four. What are we going to do here? Oh, great. So, that's that's going to be a seven. It's gonna, I can't decide to burn. Oh, can I? Because um, I would decide to burn uh, t- ten luck to make it seventeen. That he'd have to roll against. And what's your word? Love. Oh. Love. Ooh. Um, so it's a will save? And new. Yeah, we'll save 17. Okay. Oh, it's a 20. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh. Love. Ooh. I have no time for love and songs and merriment. Uh, We're back to Fireball. But you must love during Christmas. She's just going to kind of start weeping with it, yeah. I don't know. I don't have any, like, uh, happy love powers. So uh, just a quick talk. So we need to be nice to it? Sing yes. Fireball is going to nuzzle up to him gently. Do I roll to hit? <laughs> like a like a playful <laughs> pet. Um, no, okay. He might take okay. some thorns. Uh, Yes. Okay. Um. Give me. Give me a. Yeah. Give me a DC eight reflex save. Ooh, that's a fail. Yeah. So he's going to take. There we go. For two hit points of cuddly as a cactus damage. All right. I should have to roll to try to stop. Like I assume he would be dodging and not wanting to be cuddled. So it seems like I should roll to hit. Okay. That fair enough. Sense? That makes sense. In which case, I will dial back the damage. So, Oh, unless I hit. Then I yeah. take the damage. Okay. Which is 12, 14, 15. Yes, 15 makes contact. Okay, so I do take the hit. Yes. And you ow, do nibble up to him. Yeah, and the Grinch seems quite confused by this. And almost, he brings one of his hands down, almost as if he wants to pet you. And once again, you notice the stone within the ice seems to be changing color. So it's no longer quite so green. And it, you could swear that your eyes are playing a trick on you, but you're certain it's grown. Two sizes? Slightly more in size. And Sam, Snowman is up. Merry Christmas, Grinch. Let's go deliver presents to Whoville. Presents? I have no need for presents. It will be fun. You will love it. Fun? Love? Presents? Bah! He starts dancing a jig and singing along with Cindy Lou. Give me an attack roll for this. Attack roll? Okay. Yeah, even though you're not attacking. Oh, you're playing your lute? Oh, I think I have your... Wait a minute. You're right. Do I have an, an instrument? Yeah, you can make a performance check to spin a compelling tale in a I song do have a, yeah. and mesmerize your target. Well, but it mem- it's everybody in earshot, which is uh, why I haven't used that. But so I will play my loot. This might be the perfect time for it. Yeah, unfortunately, Sam's ability, special ability is very indiscriminate. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't, haven't wanted to use it. It's an area effect loot. Yeah. Not using the special ability. This is just, I have it. I'm going to use it. Okay. As the beautiful strains of the melody that Sam plays on his lute fills the cavern, a wide grin spreads across the Grinch's face, and the pitiful creature sits down, then lies down on the dais, and falls into a peaceful slumber, smiling and snoring in happiness. There we go. Perfect chance for SD to backstab him. Oh, As it does so... You notice the gem within the ice grow three sizes larger, (laughs) cracking the surrounding ice and revealing itself to be an almost exact duplicate of the Yulite, as Mrs. Claus so rightly pointed out. With the new Yulite now atop the majestic pine in the center of Christmas Town, 
peace and joy once again falls across the land. No longer does the sour sweet winds blow. Do the sour sweet winds blow, people? Nor does the gloom tinted sky threaten. But a radiant peace shines from the lofty pine of old into the night sky and the hearts of all mankind. With the holidays saved and Santa once again making his rounds, the people of Christmas Town gather around you, shouting out in glee, You are the heroes who saved Christmas. You'll all go down in history. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Yay. Hopefully we found Max and patched him up at some point. <laughs>